Ahead of the trade deadline this year, the Dallas Mavericks had a 58% chance of making the playoffs. They, of course, made the blockbuster trade to acquire Kyrie Irving. And in the 24 games since, they've gone 8-16 and 16 and now just have a 6% chance of making the playoffs as of recording. Over that same span, only four teams have had worse records than the Mavericks. The Pistons, the Rockets, the Trailblazers, and the Spurs. Three of those are tanking, and the Blazers just shut down Lillard. Now, you may point to the fact that neither Kyrie or Luka has been fully healthy since the trade, and that's true. However, in the 15 games they've both been on the court, the team is 4-11. and 11. In fact, if they do go on to miss the playoffs, which it seems to be more and more likely, Luka will become the fifth highest scorer in league history to miss the playoffs. Only Wilt Chamberlain, Tiny Archibald, Allen Iverson, and yes, Bernard King averaged more points and missed the playoffs than potentially Luka and his 32.8 points per game this season. Some may call it being unlucky. Others may call it the Kyrie Irving effect, but that's exactly the debate we're about to have. My friend, Jason Cole, who unfortunately is gaining a reputation on the streets as a guy who can't guard me. I know you're prepared to defend Kyrie Irving here. The numbers certainly may suggest that he is the problem here, but your thoughts. You can't blame Kyrie Irving for them not making a playoffs. He just was acquired midseason. Like, it takes time to gel. It takes time to build chemistry. It takes time for guys to learn each other on the court. It takes time for guys to trust each other. You can't imagine what it takes for somebody to trust somebody to know that they're going to knock that shot down, so you got to make that pass to him. It's just a multitude of things, so you can't blame Kyrie Irving because he's averaging in the 19 games that he did play with them, 27 points, six rebounds, five assists, and when he was with Brooklyn, he averaged the same thing. They need to get it together. Jason Kidd needs to understand his rotation. Like sometimes we, I saw him the other night against the Hawks. It's like sometimes he plays JaVel McGee, sometimes he doesn't. JaVel McGee got in for the first time in the third quarter, and he came in and he had like 14 points and 11 rebounds. He affects the game because of his height. You need somebody down there to just clean up. You can't expect Luka to rebound 13 boards every night and 13 assists and 40 points. Like, that's not like that's not realistic. He's not going to get that every night. And the fact that they got Kyrie now to take some of that off of his shoulders is going to work. They just got to win these next three games. I see the Mavericks making the playoffs. All right, well, so they have a 6% chance to make the playoffs as of recording. But the point in all of this is in my opinion, is there are great players who are very talented, who are great scorers, who will be remembered forever for how gifted they are at handling, at scoring, at finishing with both hands, but not remembered for winning. And I think Kyrie is, despite the success he had in Cleveland, he's transitioned into that type of player. And now you and I are, sometimes it's felt like over the past year, you and I are like the last two guys on Kyrie Irving Island defending him supporting him and saying he's great thinking you can win with him but when you look at the numbers before the trade right Brooklyn won 60 percent of the games in which Kyrie appeared they won 67 of the games six excuse me 67 percent of the games that he sat now in Dallas it's a much smaller sample size I know that but the numbers are barely better he, they're winning at 37% when he plays, 33% when he doesn't. So it's 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 a better number in Dallas so far, granted, much smaller sample size. But in Brooklyn, they were better without him. Not much, but they won more games without him than they did with him. But you so, still won with him. You still won with him, right. yes. But my point in saying this is the way the NBA works – you can be a great player and not be a winner. That's it's, a fact. That's there are a fact. lot. Of, it works in the NFL too. It works in baseball. In the NFL, you have plenty of great quarterbacks who put up phenomenal numbers but are not winners. It's okay. Kyrie already and I won. think I think he Kyrie. I think Kyrie is transitioning himself now into one of those guys where we will remember him as a great player, but there's so many negatives 
and chaos that comes with having him on your team. And I think it's going to lead to the Mavericks not making the playoffs. Okay, and that may be the the bottom line for this season. But next season, that's not going to be the case. He's gonna have he's gonna have went through a summer, a training camp, a preseason, and then go into the season. That's different than being traded on some last minute shit from Brooklyn to Dallas, with yeah. all the outside controversy that surrounds him. Also, with him trying to figure out his next shoe brand, right? <laughs> oh, so deal. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not blaming other things on anything. I'm just telling you, there's outside turmoil that everybody else focuses on that he does have to pay some attention to. For sure. But we'll, we'll, we'll begin to close with this. The other takeaway that I have, the, the guy to blame for the Mavericks' dysfunction right now, it's not Luka, it's not Kyrie, it's not Jason Kidd, it's not Mark Cuban. It's not having Jalen Brunson. That's the issue. Even when they were doing well this year, they looked lost not having Jalen Brunson. And when they didn't have him last year, it took a, an incredible performance from Luka for them to win. They, were, they, they are not the same team without Jalen Brunson. And if you look at what the Knicks are doing right now, it certainly justifies that argument. Even Luka said it. You know, they, they miss Jalen Brunson. So, And, and Jalen Brunson is not on the level of player and talent and skill that Kyrie Irving is, but he's a better winner. I, I'll say that. He was coming off the bench, too. He played a different role in the, because they had a different team. You got to understand this because why? If Kyrie had a slew of players around him like he did in Brooklyn, they, he had a lot of young talent around him and they were winning. It wasn't just him and Luka. I mean, I'm not discrediting Reggie Bullock and, and Keebler and, and Josh Green. But I'm saying those guys are just finding themselves because they're not consistent on a night-to-night base. Those aren't guys. Right. They they are NBA talents. So at that rate, it's like he doesn't have that much help around him, right? And it's just him and Luca. And they have to find out how to work well together. Yeah, for sure. Right. So that's the part. Because why Luca was ball dominant and he made a bunch of, like you say, guys look really good. But now when you have Kyrie on the court, he needs to have the ball to get right, too. So they just got to find their spots and their times and their areas and know how to get right with each other. And that's going to happen. Yeah. Well, we'll see. My my prediction is they don't make the playoffs. It, it's not. It's just not looking good for them. Um, and I think, I think having chaos in the locker room and only two guys to really win you the game – it's a lot to overcome, especially when one of the two guys who can win you the game seemingly brings the chaos with him wherever he goes. But for what it's worth, Jewish guy here saying, I love Kyrie, one of my favorite players. I support that man. Uh, I hope it all works out for them. I just think it's a lot to overcome at the moment. I know for a fact it's going to work out if Kyrie stays in Dallas. And I mean, all they got to do is win tonight against the Kings, win against the Bulls, and then win against the Spurs. And they're in the play-in. And yeah. I wouldn't want to see that team for one game elimination. No. Seven I don't care what team it is. Aired. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. We'll Be see a friend of a friend, man. Go hit that button. <laughs>